Oh. <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> Went straight to the exit screen rather than to this one. So, uh, good afternoon. This is Reading for Charity again. This time we're doing The Secret History by Donna Tart. Um, this is the third of the five reviews we're going to be doing today. Um, this is probably going to be the... L might be the longest of the, th of the five, they might not. These are all going to be quite short, I suspect, because um, I'm trying to do all this all in one sitting. So, Secret History by Donna Tart. This is review number 50. This is the 50th review of the of the 100 books. So this is halfway through. Um, yeah, so this is a this is quite a, a monumental part in the uh, in the in in this year. Um, so for starters, this is uh, I should I should get this out of the way. This is one of my wife's favorite books, which is why it went on the list. I think there was three books my wife put on the list, all of which are her favourite books. This one is well loved, as you can tell. This has been dropped in the bath a couple of times, I think. Um, so this is a, a, a very loved novel. This is one of the ones she reads every single year, a particular chunk of it every single single year. Um, and I could identify which bit it was when I read it as well. Um, <clears throat> so The Secret History by Donna Tart. It's an awesome, awesome book. At least two thirds of it are awesome. So it deals with um, basically an eccentric group of students at a New Hampshire university. Why is it always New Hampshire? There, there seems to be only two places in America for books. The American Northeast, so New Hampshire area, or California. That's it. There's the only two places that ever get written about in American novels. I don't understand why. But hey, an eccentric group of students in uh, the the American Northeast in, the Ham in uh, New Hampshire who basically have a bit of a cult thing going on. So they all do um, kind of Greek literature, they all do Greek language courses and it's the only thing they have and it's an eccentric um, professor, uh, they don't take any other classes, they're all very cliquey and then shenanigans happen <clears throat> and the shenanigans are that they basically all go through the, the various Greek madnesses. Um, they all try to, to get this kind of uh, backy, bacchanalian um, kind of style madness by going through the uh, a series of rituals which ends up in a death and then they try to cover up the death and then that leads to uh, more shenanigans where someone finds out about the death and basically starts blackmailing them so they have to kill him and then his body gets found and and so on and so on and so on and so on and so on. It, it's, it's a really fantastically well written novel. So it, for starters it's very very clever. The way that uh, she sets up ideas that the, the author might not, uh, the reader might not be aware of such as the, uh, the different madnesses in Greek um, literature. Um, she sets up the idea as part of the class. So she, she, the, kid, the, 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 the students learn about these things. And then they essentially go through them later on. Um, you know, and it's not so... Uh, it's one of these clever ones where it's not pounded into you. you. Go look, 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 look how clever I'm. Look what I'm doing with them. Look, they're all going through the madnesses. They just go through the madnesses, and then you then you realise, oh wait a minute, that's what's being done. It's very, very cleverly written. Um, the characters are 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 very well done. It is very um, kind of spooky, cultish like all the way through with the you know the secretive former famous um, professor who is ha semi in hiding because he taught somebody he shouldn't have and he's wanted by a foreign government and that's fantastic you've got the, the you know the super clever nerd you've got the the twins who are obviously sleeping with each other you've got the the the, the effete dude you've got the and then there's the one sticking point that i have in this which is uh, bunny's character you know who's a bit of a dumb jock and you can't i can't i this is this is so <clears throat> Bunny is the one who dies, and that's not a spoiler because, you know, it's essentially the first page in the book. They talk about Bunny's death, and the first half of the book then leads up to Bunny's death. You know it's going to happen, and it, it leads you to how that happens. Um, and I can't understand why it why it's happened, why, 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 why you get there. Um, I don't understand why Bunny, for starters, has to die in the first place, because... Um, So, well, let's put it this there's, there's two halves of the book. The first half is where they lead up to Bunny's death, and the second half is the aftermath of that. So, in the first half, um, Bunny is the one who finds out about the, the death of a farmer when they're doing the rituals, and then he starts blackmailing Henry, who is basically the little leader of the cult, and the most charismatic, intelligent one of the bunch, 
um, and who's clearly either a psychopath or a sociopath. It's not, it's not really quite sure which, but he doesn't care much about anyone else. Um, so it's blackmailing him for money and trips abroad, etc., etc., and then they decide to get rid of decide to get rid of Bunny, which is fine, and it's all good. Um, but I don't understand why Bunny is part of the group in the first place because he doesn't fit in with the rest of them. And um, and Richard is, is it's so hard for Richard to get into the group, the, into the clique at the start of the book, you know, and all the trials and tribulations he has actually getting into the clique. I don't understand how Bunny gets into the clique because he's completely ill suited. Unless Henry is setting him up to be murdered in the first place. In which case, the rest of the book becomes slightly interesting and, and, and even remotely silly. Um, I don't understand what Bunny's point in the book is at all, other than to be a slightly unsympathetic character for them to, to bump off. Um, and having been proven to be you know highly intelligent and highly awesome... Um, and good at developing plans, the, the actual plan they have for killing Bunny is a stupid one. It's a completely stupid one. So Henry, who's supposed to be the clever one and comes up with all the plans and immediately comes up with a poisoning plan for Bunny and then discards it as being too complicated. He's probably right. So then his plan is to basically just you know, knock him off the side of a cliff when they're there for a walk. But his the stupidity he has is he invites everyone to do it. So they all join in, basically killing Bunny. And it's like, well, if he's so intelligent, why do that? Why doesn't he sneak off himself? Because he's, you know, he has a history of disappearing off, you know, for weeks at a time, whatever. Kill Henry himself, and then just, you know, leave again. The more people, he's already learnt his lesson with the more people involved in something, the likelihood of it getting out. And so he makes exactly the same mistake he made again, which is he involves everyone in the killing of Bunny, which leads to everyone's downfall because Charles ends up going off the wall with Henry and threatens to tell people. Um, but the part of the point of it, part of the problem I have is that the killing of Bunny is completely unnecessary in the first place um, because there's a ready-made alibi set in there. You know, they they talk about oh they're they're never going to believe you know four kids four rich kids over you know the whole of uh, New Hampshire. But the point is is that once they've cleaned themselves up. And this is back in you know a time when there's no uh, there's no DNA testing you know that doesn't exist so even if they found some blood on someone's clothes you know you're never going to have that problem you know of of, of DNA testing against the, uh, the the dead farmer there is literally no evidence connecting them to the death of the farmer other than they live in a house that's quite close to um, to where they are so um, the, with no evidence of them actually doing the crime. Um, Bunny has no no evidence of other than you know I know that they did it. Um, and after a little bit to the, the, the time of the blackmail, you know why don't they just go to the police and say, look, he's trying to blackmail me into giving him stuff. He wants to to link us to the murder. We didn't do it. There's no evidence that we did it. He's clearly a lunatic. Um, please get him away from us. And that would be the end of the story. They would have gotten away with the murder of the of the farmer and no end but once they've decided that you know they're, no they're going down for the murder if anyone ever discovers about it despite the fact there's zero evidence linking them then the murder of bunny is inevitable um so there's there's a certain amount of stupidity in there in terms of the actual murder of bunny itself which i uh, which leads me to think that there's at least one unreliable narrator in this i think there's at least three un unreliable narrators in this i think henry's one of them i think richard's another one and i think the professor's a third one because the second half of the book, and this is slightly where the book falls down, the first half of the book is tremendous, it's absolutely brilliant. But the second half of the book um, slightly goes off the off the rails because um, it's not a patch on the first half. The first half sets up the murder, sets up the death, sets up brilliantly. And then the second half meanders and wanders and it's got some good bits in it, like with the way they go through the madnesses, but it has, it doesn't know how to finish the story. Um... There was two ways I thought it was going to go. I thought that either it was going to fall down into complete and total, you know, cult behaviour and it was all going to end up with a kind of a Waco style, um, you know, group death as the as they all ascend into godhood because Henry's managed to talk them into it. Or I thought they were going to get caught by the, um, the FBI and the second half of the book was basically um, how from the, you know, you know 
um, them getting caught for the murder from the viewpoint of the criminal. So you know the FBI are there and they're talking about things and then I thought it was going to go from that standpoint. I thought that would have been a really clever way to do it, them getting caught for the murder by the FBI because they've been so stupid. No, none of those things happen. Instead, you know, um, there's a few wild character swings in order to make the book work and reach an end and the ending is unsatisfactory. It's kind of the only way out of the story, which is, you know, I'm not going to spoil the story, but the, the, there's only by the time you get to the end of the book, there's only really one way she can get out of it, and that's the route she takes. And it is unsatisfactory, and it also leads to more of the um, the thought that it could be just an unreliable narrator, because everything that gets done ends up getting pinned onto one person, and that person, by the end of the book, cannot... Um, speak up for themselves and the book is written as a, as a memoir essentially um, so it's like they did the whole thing it's all their fault we were led astray yada 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 so if you take the unreliable narrator approach it, the unsatisfactory ending could be because it's the narrator trying to find some way of justifying everything that went on before yeah, which is fine but it leads an unsatisfactory ending is an unsatisfactory ending regardless of how clever you make it um, I would have preferred one of the other endings, but um, having spoken to my wife, who's read some of her other books, she says this is actually a problem with Donna Tartt herself, that um, she struggles to end books. She writes really good setups and then meanders and finishes off on unsatisfactory on, on, on endings. So I'm guessing this is actually just a Donna Tartt problem rather than actually a really clever way of writing the book. Which is a shame because... Um, you know, two thirds of this book is tremendous, and then it just kind of peters out. And I wish, I wish, I'd wish you'd taken a more, you know, exciting approach to the end of the book because the first half of it's tremendous. It's absolutely fantastic. Um, yeah. So, should you read this book? Should you read *Secret History* by Donna Tartt? Yes, you definitely should. I was massively surprised by how much I enjoyed the first two thirds of this book. It was brilliant. I was high enough every single word of it. And having gone through a whole heap of books where I was struggling to get through them, having something that was an actual page turner was joyous. <laughs> Absolutely joyous. It was really enjoyable. I enjoyed this book greatly. So yes, you should definitely read this book. Definitely, definitely, definitely. And I'm not just saying that because it's one of my wife's favourite books. It's now on, on my list of really, really, really good novels. I highly recommend this. Yes, so Secret History by Donna Tartt. Really, really good book. Um, why are we doing all this? This is, again, um, this is a charity read. We're doing 100 novels in a year for the Archie Foundation. It's a really good charity that um, helps kids in the northeast of Scotland. Um, there's a Just Giving link in the in the description. If you want to donate, please go ahead. It's a fantastic charity, and I will not hold it against you if you do or you don't. But, um, <clears throat> yeah, this is that's review number three of the five that we're doing. The next one is going to be Dostoevsky the Idiot another wodgy tome but you know we were getting through them all we're getting through them all okay so um see you again in two minutes time thank you very much for watching thank you very much for listening and uh good afternoon